Several pieces of news in this coming criminal trial of Donald Trump. His allies have eyed delay as this kind of key tactic we hear about in dealing with the indictment. We know special counsel Jack Smith, however, vowed a speedy trial. My office will seek a speedy trial in this matter, consistent with the public interest and the rights of the accused. Now, there are some complexities with classified evidence in this case, but the federal judge overseeing the case is making news with a fast timeline, ruling that Trump's espionage trial will now be set to begin on August 14th. Now, that's just eight weeks from now, and Trump's run for office is ongoing. It puts the trial on a collision course with the first Republican presidential debate the following week. The trial and related hearings will be held in a federal courthouse, basically in a small Florida town. And this plan is putting even more pressure on Trump to get in gear. He has seen several lawyers depart his defense team. He was recently adding new ones as of last week. Now, to be ready for a trial that soon, Judge Cannon is ordering all pretrial motions be filed by July 24th, and that items needed for trial, like the witness plan and exhibits, are submitted by August 8th. We know the DOJ thinks it's ready for all of this because it is the DOJ that set off this timeline. If you control the timing of an indictment, you choose to file it when everything on your side is as ready as possible. Whether Donald Trump's evolving defense team can get ready is an open question. Trial dates, of course, can be delayed for valid reasons. And this case has these extra issues that we know, security clearances, possible extra appeals given the topics. So while the speed looks better for DOJ's plan, these first dates are seen as highly unlikely to hold and be completely met by August. So right here tonight, we have that one new advancement in the case. Another piece of news is the fallout as this defendant admits more details of his alleged crimes. Now, one of the key allegations is in this indictment that Donald Trump knowingly took, kept, and hid classified documents. That's the conduct that he's accused of. Now, tonight I could tell you he is in the fallout for going back out on TV this week, doing interviews that honestly at times look more like a version of Jack Smith's evidence on that conduct than what any defense lawyer would want a defendant to say. Everything was declassified because I had the right to declassify. I take out personal things, golf shirts, clothing, pants, shoes. That was not a document. I didn't have a document per se. These were newspaper stories, magazine stories, and articles. I'm just, I want to go through the boxes and get all my personal things out. I don't want to hand that over to Nara yet. Trump confronted with some of his own past admissions. Also, he made some new ones. He also offered the defense there you heard that could be shredded by facts. In this new Fox interview, he claims that tape of him that got so much attention of him discussing a battle plan was actually him referencing newspaper articles. Okay, but obviously articles are not ever classified and presidents don't talk about declassifying articles. So the defense itself sounds incriminating like something you would make up on the spot. Now, I then want to turn your attention tonight to a key and damning part of this new interview, Making Waves. Jack Smith accused Trump, remember, of only returning some documents, keyword, some, and then lying to the DOJ by claiming he gave all the documents back. Now, that is one of the core allegations of some of the crimes Trump stands accused of, that he is now set to go on trial for in August, some versus all. So listen here, as Trump admits, he only gave back some. We they were did talking. ask for it. No, and they said, I gave can you give some, the documents back? And we were talking. Okay. What you hear there quite briefly is a type of confession. It's quick, so I'm actually going to play it again for you right now. And we've put on the screen here, because we're not just repeating anything that's said, we're reporting out the context and the facts, or as some might say, both sides of the case. Well, you're about to hear that again quickly with the very certification Trump's team submitted, which, remember, claimed all documents were returned. DOJ's evidence shows that Trump did not return all documents to the archives or to DOJ. And that's what eventually led to the search. So here is that moment. We they were did talking. ask for it. No, and they said, I gave can you give some, the documents back? And we were talking. I gave them some. That is an unusual admission. Defendant Donald Trump backing up the prosecutor, indicting him, quite literally. 
Trump admitting he returned some of the requested material. Jack Smith's indictment makes the same accusation, that it's a crime because you return some and then lie to the FBI and the DOJ claiming it was all. So this is that thing where people say, OK, Ari, what's it like reporting the news or what are we going to hear? What are we going to learn? I didn't know we were going to be reporting on this tonight. I didn't know I would be coming out and showing you in detail with evidence that on this point, they're in agreement, public agreement, Donald Trump backing up Jack Smith. Make of that what you will. It's part of a key to the case because, as we've been showing you, the first archives requests were made in 2021. The DOJ search came over a year later after Trump returned some documents. Then DOJ demands the missing documents in the subpoena. And then, as we've shown you, Trump gave some more back. What you see up top is him giving back 38 documents and falsely saying those 38 were, quote, all the requested documents. But he hid the others. And after months of this, Trump's team lied about returning all the documents, basically daring DOJ to respond to what looked like a provocation. And DOJ responded. A full two months after that certification, we show you here, they searched and found this jackpot, 102 documents that Trump was hiding. The discovered documents proved, as far as Jack Smith was concerned, that Trump was lying about returning, quote, all the documents, and that led to these charges. By holding the documents, Donald Trump very clearly set off a chain of events, which then got him caught red-handed. And it was kind of a slow path, over a year from the initial clash with the archives, months from the DOJ request. Now, we made this timeline here in our reporting gleaned from the evidence that we have. This is the kind of thing, not exactly this, but the kind of material, kind of argument that the jury would hear in this case, backed up now by Trump's own admission about giving up some. We gave up some. Also backed up by the lawyer's notes, if they're admitted into evidence, and the public record. So now, in this new interview, Donald Trump does what Donald Trump does. He mixes some of those admissions with other lies. Think about the length of time I just showed you that led to that search. And then you have Trump falsely claiming there was no lengthy lead up or anything, that the search, in fact, was sudden. No one was in the box. With NARA giving them back. All of a sudden, we've got raided, which is a violation of my, you know, Fourth Amendment rights. There was nothing all of a sudden about it. And no court ever found a Fourth Amendment violation. So I've shown you some of these breakthrough pieces of information. You take it all together. What's happening here? What is he getting at in this interview? What is this defendant doing? Now, on one hand, it can be tempting to see this as another sequel or repeat to what Donald Trump has done before. And you have your TV on or your YouTube on whenever you happen to be seeing this. But you follow the news. So you've probably seen this thing before where Trump mixes lies with brazen confessions and then seems to get away, seems to duck accountability. That's one hand. On the other hand, the facts do show that there are parts of this that are actually different right now, that even though we all have a temptation to just plug in the usual or wake me when it's over, if we're in this together and we are talking about someone who has exerted a lot of impact on America, who's currently running for president, who tried to steal the election, steal your vote, end your democracy, and now this person is basically awaiting federal criminal trial, first former president ever to, some things are different. Trump's never faced a federal case before. He's certainly never faced a prosecutor like Jack Smith. Jack Smith has a clearly, measurably stronger hand than some other prosecutors who've been down these roads. He has this probe where he's actually delivered some goods and now has an August trial scheduled, which is rattling Trump world. Jack Smith also still has more in the barrel. He has an open probe into January 6th, which puts pressure on others in Trump's orbit in both of these cases. You know, you take it together and you can think about what Lauren Hill once said in her wisdom. Hypocrites always want to play innocent, always want to take it to the full out extent, never want to face it when it's time for punishment. Can't slick talk on the day of judgment because consequence is no coincidence. That's a deep statement about justice or consequence or accountability or what some people call karma. Now, we don't do karma. That's way above our pay grade. And the DOJ is not supposed to do karma. 
the spiritual sense of it. The consequences they are supposed to deal with must be based entirely on evidence without fear or favor. And all I can tell you is this special counsel, who is different than the others Trump has faced, got enough evidence for a lawful court, ordered search, then found the very things he was looking for, went slowly and deferentially at first, giving this defendant, now defendant, every possible off-ramp, then filed his indictment overloaded with damning evidence. And now tonight we watch as even more evidence accrues. And remember, the original indictment has material making the argument that Donald Trump should be imprisoned for a long time if convicted, material based on Donald Trump's public statements. Did Donald Trump just add to the next stage of this with more public statements and confessions? And does all of this accrue to something that will be actually different this time? Thank you.